Do you have any concerns about your skin today? Your learning objectives for mastering the examination of the skin are to assess the color, moisture, temperature, texture, and mobility of the skin, to identify vascular and purpuric lesions, suspicious tumors and nevi, and to identify abnormalities of the hair and nails. Common or concerning symptoms relating to the skin include hair loss, rash, moles, and changes in the nails. By eliciting the patient's concerns before the examination, you prepare for an examination that is efficient and productive. Okay, so you have some concerns about some skin moles or uh, lesions that you've seen on your skin recently? I've just noticed that I seem to have a couple more. Clinicians play an essential role in educating patients about early detection of suspicious growths, protective measures for skin care, and the hazards of excessive sun exposure. Be prepared to advise your patient about the awareness and detection of the major types of skin cancers. Instruct the patient in the ABCDE method for assessing moles, and if possible, Show the patient photos of melanomas and basal and squamous cell carcinomas for reference. The skin is the heaviest single organ of the body. Its major function is to keep the body in homeostasis despite daily assaults from the environment. The skin provides boundaries for body fluids while protecting underlying tissues from microorganisms, harmful substances, and radiation. The skin also modulates body temperature and synthesizes vitamin D. The most superficial layer, the epidermis, is thin and has no blood vessels. It is divided into two layers, an outer horny layer of dead keratinized cells and an inner cellular layer where both melanin and keratin are formed. For its nutrition, the epidermis depends on the underlying dermis, which is well supplied with blood. The dermis contains connective tissue, sebaceous glands, sweat glands, and hair follicles. The dermis merges below with subcutaneous tissue, or adipose, also known as fat. Sebaceous glands produce a fatty substance secreted through the hair follicles. These glands are present on all skin surfaces except the palms and soles. Sweat glands are either eccrine or apocrine, the eccrine glands are widely distributed, open directly onto the skin's surface, and help control body temperature through sweat production. In contrast, the apocrine glands are found chiefly in the axillary and genital regions. They usually open into hair follicles and are stimulated by emotional stress. The color of normal skin depends primarily on four pigments. Melanin, the brownish pigment of the skin, is genetically determined and is increased by sunlight. Carotene, a golden yellow pigment, is found in subcutaneous fat and heavily keratinized areas such as the palms and soles. Hemoglobin, present in the red blood cell, carries most of the oxygen of the blood. Oxyhemoglobin is the bright red pigment that predominates in the arteries and capillaries. Deoxyhemoglobin is the darker and somewhat bluer pigment occurring when oxyhemoglobin loses its oxygen to body tissues while passing through the capillary bed. An increased concentration of deoxyhemoglobin in cutaneous blood vessels gives the skin a bluish cast known as cyanosis. Skin color is affected not only by pigments but also by the scattering of light as it is reflected back through the turbid superficial layers of the skin or vessel walls. Appendages of the skin include the hair and nails. Adults have two types of hair. Vellus hair, which is short, fine, inconspicuous, and relatively unpigmented, and terminal hair, which is coarser, thicker, more conspicuous, and usually pigmented. Scalp hair and eyebrows are examples of terminal hair. Nails protect the distal ends of the fingers and toes. The firm rectangular and usually curving nail plate gets its pink color from the vascular nail bed to which the plate is firmly attached. Note the whitish moon, or lunula, 
and the free edge of the nail plate. The proximal nail fold covers roughly one-fourth of the nail plate, called the nail root. The cuticle extends from the proximal nail fold and, functioning as a seal, protects the space between the fold and the plate from external moisture. Lateral nail folds cover the sides of the nail plate. Note that the angle between the proximal nail fold and the nail plate is normally less than 180 degrees. In conditions of chronic hypoxia, however, you may detect clubbing, in which case the nail plate may become more convex with the angle increasing to greater than 180 degrees. With the patient's health history in mind and after good hand hygiene, you are ready for the physical examination. For a thorough skin examination, make sure the patient wears a gown that allows close inspection of the anterior and posterior body surfaces, the hair, and feet and hands. Inspect and palpate the skin, noting its color, moisture, temperature, texture, mobility and turgor, and any lesions. Have you noticed any changes in any pigmentation in your skin? A patient may notice changes in skin color before you do. Ask if the patient has noticed any such changes, specifically increased pigmentation, most often increasing brownness, or loss of pigmentation, redness, pallor, cyanosis, or yellowing of the skin. The red color of oxyhemoglobin and the pallor resulting from a lack of it are best assessed where the horny layer of the epidermis is thinnest and causes the least scatter. At the fingernails, lips, and mucous membranes, particularly those of the mouth and palpebral conjunctiva. In dark-skinned persons, inspecting the palms and soles may also be useful. Central cyanosis is best identified in the lips, oral mucosa, and tongue. The lips can also turn blue in the cold, and melanin in the lips may stimulate cyanosis in darker-skinned people. Cyanosis of the nails, hands, and feet may be central or peripheral in origin. Anxiety or a cold examining room may cause peripheral cyanosis. Look for the yellow color of jaundice in the sclera. Jaundice suggests liver disease, or excessive hemolysis of red blood cells. Jaundice may also appear in the palpebral conjunctiva, lips, hard palate, undersurface of the tongue, tympanic membrane, and skin. To see jaundice more easily in the lips, blanch out the red color by pressure with a glass slide. Here, jaundice is not present. For the yellow color that accompanies high levels of carotene, Look at the palms, soles, and face. Assess for moisture, noting characteristics such as dryness, sweating, and oiliness. When assessing for skin temperature, use the backs of your fingers. Carefully note the temperature of any red areas. Characteristics of texture include roughness and smoothness. To assess mobility, lift a fold of skin and note the ease with which it lifts up. To assess turgor, note the speed with which the skin returns into place. Observe any lesions of the skin, noting their important characteristics. Note the anatomic location and distribution of any lesions over the body. Do they involve exposed surfaces, the intertriginous or skin fold areas, extensor or flexor areas, or acral areas such as the hands and feet? Do they involve any areas exposed to specific allergens or irritants, such as wristbands or rings? Describe the type of lesion. Is it a macule or flat on the skin surface, like a cafe au lait spot? Is it raised or a papule seen in psoriasis? Is it a vesicle that is palpable and fluid-filled or a nevus or pigmented lesion? If possible, Find and inspect representative and recent lesions that have not been traumatized by scratching or otherwise altered. Note their patterns and shapes. Are the lesions linear, clustered, annular, that is, in a ring, arciform, that is, in an arc, or dermatomal, 
meaning covering a skin band that corresponds to a sensory nerve root. Finally, note the color of the lesions. When examining nevi, apply the ABCDE method for assessing melanomas. Inspect for asymmetry, irregular borders, color variation, especially blue or black mixed with white and red, diameter larger than 6 millimeters, and evolution or change in size, symptoms, or morphology. Also learn to recognize the raised, pearly, sometimes reddish lesions of basal cell carcinomas and the roughened, hyperkeratotic, flaking, reddish lesions of squamous cell carcinomas. These carcinomas are often in sun-exposed areas. Reference a well-illustrated textbook of dermatology or online source so that you can broaden your knowledge of skin disorders and related systemic diseases. Accurate description of lesions and their location and distribution, combined with the history and overall physical examination, will gradually build your clinical acumen. Look at the back of your legs, see if you can see some of the areas that you're concerned about. Teach the patient the best techniques for self-examination of the skin, as recommended by the American Academy of Dermatology. Inspect and palpate the hair. Note its quantity, distribution, and texture. Inspect and palpate the patient's fingernails and toenails, noting their color and shape. Look for any lesions, clubbing, or cyanosis. Longitudinal bands of pigment may be seen in the nails of healthy people who have darker skin. Remember that a clear, well-organized clinical record Employing language that is neutral, professional, and succinct is one of the most important adjuncts to patient care. 25-year-old, otherwise healthy female, with concerns about increasing number of moles occurring over the past three months. Exam shows that color is good, skin warm and moist, nails without clubbing or cyanosis. After practice and further review of this video, Make sure you have mastered the important learning objectives for examining the patient's skin, hair, and nails.